Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Somos Biology and in this series of videos we are going to talk about microscopy. I have been preparing microscopy videos since last 7-8 years but this time it's about a short videos regarding the microscopy principles, how exactly microscopy works and we will be seeing different types and varieties of microscopy and the processes that we use to visualize specimens. So let's begin with the very first lecture of this series that is regarding the basics of light microscopy. Okay, so what is light microscopy? All of us need to handle microscope at some point of our time if you are from biology background. We know that all the time we use a microscope which is a very basic type of compound microscope which is light microscope. So in, with the help of light microscopy we visualize a biological specimen or a sample which is fixed in a slide, glass slide and we illuminate that sample with light, visible light and we can see the sample, right? But behind that vision, a lot of mechan like a lot of principle works. So our, our goal here is to understand all those principles in details. So the very first thing that I want to talk about a microscope and how it functions is that microscope's job is to see through objects that we cannot see with our naked eye. That means uh, those are very, very tiny objects, very small things, right? So what we need to do is to magnify that object. So if I write down the important properties of a microscope, uh, then I must write this term magnification. Magnification. This is one of the prime thing, prime property of a microscope that it magnifies stuff. But you may ask me a question that if microscope magnifies something, magnifying glass also does that. Now what's the difference? The difference is magnifying glass can magnify uh, any object till certain level like 5x, 10x max, max to max. But a microscope, light microscope that we usually use in, in lab can easily uh, expand it 400x to 1000x with a better vision. Most sometimes it may go up to 3000x as well. So think about the magnification level that can go as high as 3000 times. X means times or number of times of a normal size. So this is a very big magnification. Now the question is if you want to see something uh, magnified 3000 times. Well, let's look at for 1000 times. Okay. So we can see things that we cannot see with your naked eye. For example, bacteria. Right. For example, protozoa right amoeba or other things like paramecium single cell organ, uh, organisms apart from that we can also see not only cells but you can also see cellular organelles like mitochondria chloroplasts and so on we can all see all these things with the help of a microscope because of the higher magnification but the question is magnification is not enough because when you are magnifying an object thousand times there is a chance that the image will get blurry Okay. Now, for a very simple instance, you take a picture, you just take a picture with your mobile phone and you start zooming into that photo. The more you zoom in, the more detail you will lose, right? So this loss of detailing is a big problem with light microscope because the more you zoom in, uh, the image becomes blurry. Now, when I say the image becomes blurry, there's a scientific term known as resolution. You probably have used these terms many times when buying camera or, or mobile phone, you know, megapixel uh, of the photos and resolution and all. Now, what is this resolution? This resolution is one of the most important property of a microscope along with magnification. A microscope job is to magnify things so that we can see things, see very tiny things, right? But at the same time, it must maintain a better resolution. Now, what we mean by resolution? So, let me write the second thing. The second important property, resolution. And as per my idea, the resolution is even more important, more important factor compared to all the other microscope. When you buy different microscope from different brands and places, the resolution of different micro microscopes vary extensively, okay, depending upon the price of the lens and all. Now, what we mean by this resolution term? The resolution is the ability to separate between two points. For example, you can see these two points as two separate points, right? If I draw them even close, can you see it? You may see it, right? 
some may not see it at this point if this video is blurry to them they cannot see if their eye has defects they cannot see further this two points as a separate entity you may see then and then finally if i draw something like this so gradually what you can clearly see here we are going from this to this two points visible as two separate entities and the more we are going towards down this this right hand side two points are not being able to be we, we are not able to separate two points at, as two vis, uh, visible entities now this is known as the power of resolution because our naked eye has a power of resolution and the resolution is fixed value right we cannot distinguish between two objects or two points as separate entities beyond that value that is the resolution of our eye okay so when we look into very tiny object the resolving power of our eye has a limitation to it right but when we are observing something under microscope the resolution power must be more than the resolution power of our eye so this is very very important the resolution of a microscope must be greater than the resolution of our eye that's why we are using a microscope as a machine to see things that we cannot see with our eye right now the question is how this resolution is maintained i mean what uh, actually give a rise to the resolution what parameters are involved in maintaining this resolution the answer to that can be given with the help of a little bit mathematical term now till this point i am explaining with very simple terms when we talk about the resolution we talk about a term known as small d or you can write it as capital d known as the distance remember when we talk about resolution that means the distance between two points as separate entities so this distance d equals to what we write lambda divided by numerical aperture or na this is the formula of a microscopic resolution now what we mean by this d is the distance the smallest distance or the minimum distance between two points recognizable as two separate entities okay so smaller the d greater the resolution smaller the d greater the resolution or r okay now what is lambda lambda is wavelength of light wavelength of light that we use for the light microscope and na is the numerical aperture now what we mean by numerical aperture when we are seeing a specimen under the microscope there is this stage let's say this is the stage this is where the slide and specimen is and we have this objective lens right next to the specimen and if i draw straight angle and cone of light let's say this is the light source diaphragm and condenser this is light source it's a very crude drawing but it's well enough to explain so the light source through condenser hit the sample then from the sample you can clearly see a cone forming between the sample and the objective lens now this cone this 3d cone is the numerical aperture in very very arbitrary term it's not scientific term to say but to explain that this cone this cone can be of different types it can be something like this big or very narrow like this right that is the numerical aperture the limit of the angle of light at which they are entering into the objective now to consider this there are angles that are present the angle at which the light is entering into the objective is very important right so we can break this equation down into lambda we can break numerical aperture down into n sin alpha what is this alpha is the angle that is forming the numerical aperture okay at which the light is entering sin alpha alpha or theta whatever you take that is the angle of light and what is this n this n is refractive index refractive 
index what is refractive index for different media the light entering inside it is varying okay for example in air the refractive index is supposed to be 1 1.0003 something so we consider it to be 1 refractive index of 1 similarly for a liquid media the refractive index is more so if you use water instead of air the refractive index will be 1.33 and if you use oil, the refractive index is even more because it's viscosity of the oil, 1.51. So now the question, there is a big question. Lambda divided by n sine alpha. Okay. And actually this distance is not exactly equal to that. It's in like distance varies with this lambda by numerical aperture. So to get an equation value, we need to multiply the lambda with a constant that is known as 0 0.61 write it as a constant 0 0.61 so this gives us the ultimate formula of distance 0 0.61 is lambda divided by n sine alpha that is known as the distance now the lesser the value the higher the resolution right so now imagine many times in exams they ask question in CSI and also they ask questions regarding better resolution or less resolution now what will give us higher resolution now our goal to get higher resolution is the net value of this to be less lesser this value higher the resolution right so lambda if the value of lambda s what is needed for a greater resolution think about it if lambda is more then d will be more so r will be less but if the lambda is less then d will be more that means r will be less resolution uh, d will be less resolution will be more sorry if lambda is small then d will be small then r will be more or resolution will be more so that's why the lambda should be small that means the wavelength of light that we use for light microscope the smaller the wavelength the better the resolution so in the electromagnetic spectrum if we use long, long, long wavelength, larger wavelength, the microscopic resolution will be decreased. If you use smaller wavelength, the resolution will be increased. Second thing now, N, refractive index. If the refractive index is more, then D will be less, R will be more. So the N must be more. So the N should be high. Refractive index must be high. And as I told you earlier, the refractive index for air 1.003, water 1.33, oil 1.51, particularly cedar root oil, which is used in microscopy, I have a refractive index of 1.51. Okay. And then what else? Sine alpha. That means the angle at which the light is entering. So the more the angle, the less the D, the higher the resolution. So this theta or alpha, whatever you take as an angle must be more. But there is a limit. So this angle cannot work on its own, depends on the refractive index. Because in the medium, for example, if the medium is air, because normally the stage, the, the objective lens and everything is placed in the air, we are looking at the microscope in the air, surrounded by air. So the medium between the specimen and objective is the air. So that means we are using a refractive index of 1.00 something, that means 1. So if the refractive index is 1, that limits the angle of light entering into it. For objective, of 45x 70 degree is the maximum angle this is an example beyond that angle the light cannot even enter into the objective if the medium is air present between the sample and objective but now that angle can be increased how if we if we change the medium between the objective and specimen how can we change we can put water or we can put oil just to touch the specimen head with the help of the oil and the oil say at the same time will touch the objective that means this slide cover slip is there obviously then oil then objective is touching with the oil at that moment 
the distance between objective and lens uh, the specimen will be very less and that distance is totally covered with a medium which is viscous which is oil which has a higher refractive index of 1.51 so with this high refractive index we can visualize at higher magnification that's why in, in light microscope there are the three type of objectives okay the objective 10x 40x or 45x and then 100x so when we see anything with the help of the 100x 100 into the ip stain that gives us thousand times magnification that magnified image cannot be visualized with the air present as a medium between the objective and the sample we need to use oil as a medium between the objective and the specimen to visualize that okay to have a higher refractive index for a better resolution otherwise it's common sense the more the magnification the worse the resolution but to keep that even if we increase the resolution to 1000x still to get a better res uh, resolution we need to use oil present between the objective and the sample slide so that is the idea of the resolution so this is the overall two important idea of a light microscopy magnification and resolution and about magnification if i write very simple terms there are two lenses that we use there is this eye pieces and there is this objective lenses eye pieces are 10x and 15x generally 10x is widely used and objective lenses are 10x 40x or 45x sometimes other than that 100x so you can do the calculation and the total magnification is achieved multiplying the magnification of ocular that is eye lens and objective lens so 10 into 10 gives a minimum magnification of 100x with a compound light microscope and the maximum of 10 into 100 1000x if you use the eyepiece of 15x then you get a 1500x but for this higher magnification of above 1000 or even 1000 and above 1000 you need to use oil because of the higher refractive index to, to visualize the sample to visualize uh, the sample with a decent resolution but still it's not effective most of the time so you get a better resolution at this 400x and 600x magnification you can clearly do that with 15x eyepiece and 45x or 40x objective lens you can clearly get 400 to 600 x magnification so 400 times to 600 times magnification is pretty good with a lot of details retained with a better resolution in most of the microscopes available in the market both a student microscope as well as in the lab microscope right but if you need to have a better image quality and sense with a better resolution then light microscopy or bright field microscopy is not the way to go obviously we use light microscopy but the this microscopy type that we have discussed is mostly for the bright field microscopy where the background of the specimen uh, seemed very very bright and the object seemed really dark we need to utilize different types of microscopy technique like dark microscopy technique or phase contrast microscopy techniques to visualize objects with much greater details with even better resolution right so we want to talk about those dark field microscopy and the difference between dark field microscopy and bright field microscopy and phase contrast microscopy in the later videos of this series so keep watching those videos right so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more and more videos like that thank you